Yeah. You ready? Yep. Welcome to Drift for Guitars. My name is Chris. And I'm Matt. Today we're gonna to do a video on six tools that I absolutely could not live without here in the workshop. That's right, I think we use these uh, definitely every single day. I was kind of going back through and looking at some of our older videos and I just kept seeing these things pop up and I realized that there was an opportunity here for us to shoot a video for um, really, really inexperienced luthiers. So uh, if you have built maybe a couple guitars by this point, there might be something on here that you haven't seen before, but this is really, if you walk out in your garage, uh, at the end of every day, or maybe on the weekend, you're like, man, I really wish I could build a guitar. These would be things that maybe you'd want to buy before you even buy your first hand plane or thumb plane or yeah. chisels. Like, yeah. they're, they're tools that, to me, the reason I, I use them every day, I can't live without them because I, rely, I lean on them to achieve a level of precision, a level of repeatability. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just very familiar with kind of convenience too. I think there's something to be said for um, having tools that facilitate your work. Like everything you can do to make your work easier makes it yeah. more fun and more enjoyable. Right? And the best part is that none of them are expensive. Yeah. Right. I don't think we have anything on here that's over a hundred dollars. Uh, we're gonna mention a vice that's like two hundred, yeah. but um, whenever we get to it, you'll see why it's important. Anyways. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We want to take just one second to remind you guys if you enjoy what we do here. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe. So many people who watch our videos actually aren't subscribers, so we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to do that. Yep. Also, if you're enjoying the content, maybe consider becoming a member of our channel. It's a low monthly fee, but it does really help grease the wheels around here while we're trying to grow this business and grow our YouTube channel. And um, if that's too much of a commitment for you, you can also just uh, make a little small donation with a super thanks. Yeah, so, they'll yeah. have a little button down there that says thanks, and another one that says join, and you can click on those to get more information. All right, let's so, get to it. The yeah. first thing that we have, and we've got so many of these. Oh. There's one for Matt, one for me. And this is the Stumac Tape Deck Dispenser, which mm -hmm. I kind of like because Tape Deck reminds me of uh, the old Walkmans. <laughs> yeah, or the reel to reel days in recording. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But these things are just so invaluable for what we do in the shop. Um, I think we have. we have three that we're currently using in the shop right mm -hmm. now. We're about to be um, up to, I think, upwards of eight of these bad boys in here. Uh, yeah, and and I kind of held off on buying these for a while. They are $25 a piece right now as of the date of uh, of us shooting this. And So I was just looking up the price of this on Stumac's website. And fun fact, if you're watching this, um, as of the recording of this video, they're actually running a little sale on these. It's like buy one, get one 50% off, yeah. which is kind of cool. Uh, but the reason why these are so useful um, is because A, I can load up, especially on these, these three quarter inch pieces of binding tape that we have on this one, I can load up the three of them on there, have another one set up with masking tape or painter's tape. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the idea here is that being able to do this one-handed operation where we just peel it off and you get a piece of tape like that, uh, on on face value for the person who's never built a guitar, you're like, well, yeah. Well, and also you're not constantly trying to find the end of the tape on the roll with your thumb. Oh my like... god! But <laughs> yeah. there's there is a step in guitar building where you put the binding on a guitar. Uh, if you're building electrics, you don't usually do a lot of binding. But if you're doing acoustic guitars, you're going to put binding on it. And the only way to do that without this, and this is the way that I did it for years, is you got your roll of tape in your hand, and you have to individually you have to individually tear them off and then stick them on your workbench. Uh, and you end up with these rows of pre-torn tape, pre tape across there mm -hmm. um, because you have to use two hands. And then next right. thing you know, you've got the binding on the guitar and the glue. And you're like trying to reach over there. And, and, <laughs> and get the, tape the tape has dust on it, so it's not sticky anymore. Yes, and yeah, it's yeah. the worst. But as soon as I got my first one of these, uh, it was like, where has this been my whole life? I use way less tape. They're going to pay for themselves, first of all, because you use way less tape. Um, but I can just, I can be holding the guitar, I can go like this, and I'm ready to use the tape on the guitar with mm -hmm. one hand. That's And it's so important. Uh, you get a nice clean clean cut on the end of it. And uh, I mean, they're self-explanatory, right? Yeah. Uh, but they're nice and heavy, made out of steel. Um, they have, I think they got like lead shot in the bottom of them or something, because they're very heavy. And then there, there's a rubber uh, non-slip on the bottom of them. So I mean, Stumac has done a good job with these. They didn't just throw out just any tape dispenser, they said, well, what do we need for one? It's, it's clearly designed for one-handed operation. Yeah. And they just work so stinking good. Tape dispensers. Indispensable. <laughs> Jesus, I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second tool that we're gonna do today is, it's not really a tool, as much as it is a consumable. Uh, you guys see me use these all the time in the shop. Uh, yeah, uh, the uh, I'll say this: the first week I was started working for you, I was blown away by how much super glue you go yeah. through on on everything. Um, you know, uh, little repairs, um, issues with finish, 
uh, just tacking things on, uh, holding work holding for the CNC machine. Yeah, the double sided tape uh, technique. Cuts on your finger. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, first aid. Yes. And and so what I'm showing you guys here today, obviously, is the Stumac okay. line of super glues, um, CA, cyanoacrylate, whatever you want to call it, they're all kind of all the same thing. And I understand that there are many, many manufacturers and distributors of super glue and everybody's kind of got their flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I started buying my super glue right at the beginning uh, from Stumac. Uh, uh, I bought number 10, number 20, number 30 mm -hmm. uh, for my first guitar. And I've never really looked back. I know that these are not the cheapest. These are about $9 per. Uh, and this right here is the accelerant, and this is about $12, $13. This is their brush on accelerant. Uh, they also have the aerosol accelerators uh, for the super glues, which we don't use nearly as much as because they're smaller cans and we, we get a, a, a third party large can because yeah. we, we burn through it. But, <laughs> we really do. And I'm not saying that the Stumac stuff is any better or worse than any of the other ones. It's just I trust it. I know that I know exactly how their number 10 feels. Mm -hmm. I know how their number 20 feels, which is their medium viscosity yep. and their number 30. And for us, it's really easy in the shop because I'd be like, hey, can you throw me the number 10? Can yeah. you throw me the number 20? Throw me the number 30. Uh, they just work really well. Super glue, you have to have it for building guitars. You have to. It's not an option. Yeah. Um, and so you might as well get into this, to me, the Stumac ecosystem and buy theirs. Uh, but it, regardless, you're gonna need some super glue. Uh, and it almost goes hand in hand with the, um, the masking tape because if you, if you know it, how to do the double-sided tape technique using super glue, then you'll understand what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> game changer, game changer. All right, the third tool on this list is one that uh, I bought, once again, I think it was one of the very first tools that I bought when I got into guitar building. Mm -hmm. And that's the Stumac Japanese pull saw that's designed for their fret work. So this has got a very specific uh, curve to it. It is 23 thousandths of an inch, uh, which happens to be the exact same thickness as a fret tang. Okay. Um, so yeah. super useful saw for that, obviously. It's, uh, you know, it's marketed as basically being kind of a one trick pony. Um, it's meant to work very specifically with their uh, fret slotting jig that they make mm -hmm. um, and for the fret wire that they sell, along with pretty much all the fret wire in the market because I actually use LMI fret wire. I use this thing for everything. It's not, I don't use it just for, for fretting. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll use it for cutting uh, body blanks out of the, you know, out of the finished um, perimeter, uh, yeah, yeah. perimeter or whatever off the CNC machine. Um, just quick rough cuts on n knocking off a piece of wood off of something. Mm -hmm. um, but there's something about this particular Japanese pull saw that I really love. Um, it does not have the staggered teeth that you would have on most saws. Uh, so it gives you a very, very clean cut. Um, so it's about $65, definitely not the cheapest pool saw, but saws are, are you're going to get what you pay for specifically with saws. So the reason why this is on the list is because I genuinely do use it every single day in the workshop, but it's a twofer if you're starting to build guitars, because it's going to be the saw that you need to do your fret slots, yeah. right? You gotta, you gotta, you can't just use any pool saw to cut your flat sl fret slots. You have to use pretty much this one. But I'm here to tell you that it does so much more than just do fret slots. So well, and you were just using this to cut fret slots, right? Yeah, like, I yeah. literally we, just we cut normally some. yeah normally we'd use a CNC machine for that, but we're having some power issues right now. It's it's a whole thing we're working through. It's the <laughs> the joys of running a small business right. out of your garage. There's a reason we're shooting a video right now and not working. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we put the pro in procrastination. <laughs> exactly. a. A. Yeah, you can take the 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 stop off the side of here and use it for dang near anything. The only thing you can't do with this because it has this thick piece of ribbing across the top to make it nice and stiff is that you can't cut all the way through real thick pieces of wood. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, definitely uh, one of the things you're going to need um, that you will, I've been using this saw for, for 17 years. Yeah. Not this particular one. I buy a new one, you know, every few years, but this is a good time to mention it. Remember with all these Stumac tools that we're showing today, Stumac will replace any of them That's over right. the lifetime that you own it. It's not really, um, it doesn't matter the how or yeah. the why, yeah, it doesn't yeah. work anymore. So from from now on, instead of buying a new fret saw, I'm just gonna call them up and say, hey, my fret saw's dull. Uh, can I get a new one? And yeah. they'll mail me a new one. I wish you could be like, hey, I used all the super glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I picked sure. up the super glue and it's empty now. Can you send me a new yeah, one? Yeah, <laughs> my super glue is broken. What do you mean? Well, it's empty. Oh, mm, not so sure about that. <laughs> all right, so the next one is one that we were joking around earlier. I think that um, the man, the myth, the legend, Dan Erlewine, has actually gotten some of these surgically attached to his, <laughs> said, to his head. Yeah, I, I know for you, you know for a fact that he uses his every day. Oh my god, um, yes. Yeah. Dan wakes up and this is the first thing he puts on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his optimizers, man. Yeah. 
I had no idea these were called Optivisors until Matt and I went up to Stumac to do our video shoot. That's right. Uh, I, of course, I'm getting older. Uh, I turned 40 this year. What? Get out of here. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> so are you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's always been a thing. Every time, like, you see a luthier, they, you know, they're always buried in their work. And it's like, you call the name and like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and the older I get, the more I'm relying on my Optivisors. But even when I was in my early 20s. See, I'm still young enough now that I do what, like, all the, the like, the young, like, the hipster kids do with, like, the glasses that are fake. Like, I've got a pair of Optivisors that don't do any magnification. Do yeah, they're they just, just look cool. Yeah, they're, they're just, just frames. frames. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are my OG Optivisors. I have had these for about 17 years. You can tell. Uh, yeah, they are beat. You have to smack the side half the time to get the battery mm -hmm. to kick on. But, dude, I they love... They kind of smell like sweat. <laughs> they, yeah, they're terrible. Yeah. I wear these things probably at least 50% of the day, depending on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so, obviously, you look at them and you go, that makes sense. Um, there are a lot of... Uh, magnifiers on the market. There's a whole bunch on Amazon that you're going to find. These ones, to me, are the best. Matt's got an, uh, an off-brand one. Yeah, I, I, I found a knockoff pair that um, that I, I like, but I'll say this, uh, you they're too much for what I need because you really just need the one and a half times magnification yes. thing. Like the reason why I love these ones more than any of the other ones I've bought is because the focal length on these is perfect. Yeah. Um, when I wear these, I can see this right now and I can see it right now still. With the higher magnification ones that are out there, the focal length is very, very, very narrow. I do have to choke up on something yep. whenever I use my, and my like, cheapo ones. You've got to move your head like in and out and get it just right so that it's in focus. And these ones... <laughs> you're doing sort of like a, yeah, like a, a bob. The, and so like if you're moving around or the part is moving around, it's constantly coming in and out of focus. Whereas these ones don't have that issue whatsoever. Uh, AA batteries, uh, which can be a positive and a negative. I like it because I can just keep a thing of extra batteries in my workbench yeah, and pop them in when I need. Yeah. They last forever. Uh, and they just freaking work and they're very comfortable. Um, over the ear hearing protection fits really well over top of them. But I use them obviously for uh, just general inspection. Anytime I'm doing inlay work, mm -hmm. when I'm doing finish work, I use them for that. When I'm doing sanding, I use them for that. The, my, one of my thing about these is I always tell people that I'm teaching, I'm like, if it looks good under the Optivisor, yeah. it looks great. Yeah. Out of the Optivisor. Yeah. The so, naked eye is not going to be able yeah. to see it. Yeah. And so these right here, you have to have... Um, if you don't have these, your guitars are never going to get that level of like fit and finish that you really want. So mm -hmm. these aren't even uh, an option. These are about $111 as of the day of, uh, of us making this video. But um, so yeah, we're just cracking above the $100 mark with these. Yeah. Um, buy them and never look back. Like I said, I've had these for 17 years. And I don't take care of them. <laughs> well, and I, I don't think there's a, a luthier out there that would disagree with you that, like, yeah, you just, every day, every yeah. day you've got those on. Plus, so. you look a lot more like Dan Erlewine, and that's always, that's always what we yeah. want. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. All right, the next tool on our list is one that, uh, once again, if I look back at my order history at Stumac, yeah. uh, I can find my very first purchase, and this was on it. This is the uh, digital calipers that they sell. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely workhorses in our shop. I think we have five, four or five pair of calipers that we keep around the yeah. shop. And the Stumac ones, I actually really like. Hey, you know um, what people love whenever you call those micrometers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> throw, throw back to one of our earlier videos where Chris said that and the comments were, uh, they were harsh, they but were harsh. they were necessary. They were necessary. <laughs> I still slip up and call them micrometers sometimes. <laughs> calipers, digital calipers. Digital calipers. Uh, it's funny because um, John, who you guys have only seen in one video who's working with us now, when I first like, Gave him these, a set of these when he first started coming in. He was, what do I need those for? Now he's reaching for them every two seconds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we use these for everything. Basically mm -hmm. anything under six inches, I'm measuring with this. Yeah. Um, obviously we do a lot of CNC work here in the shop. And uh, <laughs> anything, anything. <laughs> uh, we use these obviously for doing uh, setups of materials and stuff inside mm -hmm. of our, our CNC machine, which is obviously we need down to yeah. the thousands of an inch yeah. for that. The obvious big thing here is if you're starting off building guitars, is you're going to use these for measuring the thicknesses of your backs, your tide, your sides, your tops, yeah. all of that. Um, in a previous video, I had mentioned the analog calipers that have the deep throat on them so that you can measure the very middle of a giant soundboard. Mm -hmm. These can't do that, but these will get you by. Yeah. Uh, you can measure these on the edge of the of the guitar top and then go through the sound hole and then measure the middle of the guitar top that way. Mm -hmm. They'll do metric, they do imperial, they do fractions, they do decimals. Yep. Why would you use fractions? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Battery lasts for absolutely ever on them. The Stumac ones, you might be wondering, why would I get the Stumac one when I can get on Amazon and buy a ten dollar pair. A, we have one of the cheapy, uh, cheapy ones. 
uh, in here, and I don't trust it for nothing. Like, when you pick it up, you can feel the play in it, the slop in it. Yeah. These feel really good. And if you've ever really actually shot for digital calipers, you know that these are real cheap. Yeah. These are about 90 bucks for the... Wait, hang on. We've got it right here, actually. Yeah, these are actually about $70. Yeah. Uh, you can easily spend $250, $500 on a nice set of digital calipers. Yeah. You don't need that $200 level of accuracy for guitar building. That's yeah. really for metalworking and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but dude, and, and they are also designed specifically for guitar builders. They've got a little notch down here that's designed for measuring the height of frets, which is really nice and useful. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, I, I I don't know how I would ever go without these. In fact, <laughs> we have about, I've about turned the shop upside down before looking for them. That's the reason we have five of them now and I still can never <laughs> find them. But like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I think, I think, where's my calipers? Yeah, uh, <laughs> if we're gonna do five, uh, five uh, tools you use every day, five questions you ask every day, where are my calipers? Where are my calipers? <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, get these bad boys. They're, they're just so good. And then the last tool on the list is a big one, and obviously we're not gonna be able to set it on the workbench because it's actually sitting behind Mr. Mr. Miller here. Slide out of the way there. There we go. Point to it. Oh. Can you do a little point? There it is. There it is. That is the guitar repair vice from Stumac. It's a game changer. And I'm gonna tell a little story about this vice. First of all, coming in at just over 200 bucks, about 203 mm -hmm. as of, of the making of this video. Yeah. But vices aren't cheap. And vi cheap vices are expensive, <laughs> right. if you know what I mean. Well, uh, that's what I'd say. Yeah, and, and vices, vices, like, yeah, cocaine is that's, it'll get super you. expensive. It'll yeah, get you. this is, uh, compared to that, way cheaper. I bought this Stumac one when I got this island workstation and I bolted it on, but it, for years, it all that I ever did was hold a temporary workbench inside of it. You guys mm -hmm. have probably seen it in previous videos. It's like a two yeah. foot by two foot, like raised up workbench and hold it in. And that's all that it ever did. It just kind of held it. <laughs> and then one day I had to take that little thing down and I started using that vice. Yeah. Holy mother of God. It is so much better than this. It's so much better than any vice I've ever mm -hmm. used. There's a reason why it's called a guitar repair vice, I believe. Um, first of all, uh, the articulating heads on it. The yeah. articulating heads are absolutely everything. The faces of those jaws are like a soft rubber material. They don't mar, they don't scratch, mm -hmm. they don't mess up finish. They're just amazing. Very but grippy, though. you yeah. can grab any guitar, no matter what the shape is, no matter where you're trying to grip it at. Like the big thing is like different size headstocks, whether it's just a Fender style headstock or a Martin, mm -hmm. whatever. You just open up the jaws, slide the piece in, and you close it, and those jaws are gonna articulate and fit it just perfect. Yep. And the guitar ain't moving. Yep. You can just boo the guitar will just sit like that. <laughs> it's just incredible. Every time I do stuff with it, I'm always raving about it. Yeah. Uh, and we're getting ready to do a shop remodel in here, which you guys are all going to see. And I think we're going to have five of those, four of those. We're going to have four of those vices in the shop, and I could not be more excited. Okay, so there you have it. Six tools that I use absolutely every single day in the workshop. And we do have links for every single one of them down below affiliate links. So click on those if you're interested in buying any of these. Mm -hmm. And remember right now, if you're watching this kind of near the date of us putting this video out that those tape dispensers are buy one, get one half off. Yeah, that's just a nice little thing for you guys. Yeah. Uh, we found that out today and we're like, okay, cool, this is this works out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, if there are any tools that you guys use every day uh, that maybe we forgot to mention, uh, let us know in the comments so that yeah. everyone else can see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, love this community. So yeah, yeah. thanks guys, appreciate it. Appreciate we'll y'all, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. <laughs>